I'm professional car photographer James Mann and we're shooting part two of our action series for how to photograph cars. This time looking at car to car or tracking photography techniques. It's the shot you most commonly see on the cover of the car magazines and along with panning and cornering which we focused on in my last video is one of the main disciplines you'll need to master to become a pro. You'll need an extra driver to drive the camera car, preferably a hatchback or an estate and a quiet stretch of road. For this shot, the feature car will pull into an overtaking or tracking position, a few meters back from the moving camera car, and will stick there while you shoot from the open back or side window. Fit your wide angle zoom and set the camera to 125th of a second to start with. If the road is bumpy, you may need to increase this to 250th of a second, but if it's smooth and you're getting good results, slow it down to a 60th or even a 30th of a second for more background and wheel motion blur. Again, safety is the priority here, so make sure everyone knows what they're going to do and have a well-planned exit strategy. You'll need good, confident drivers and a few runs to get it right, but it doesn't need high speed to get the optimum effect. 30 to 40 miles an hour should be enough. Work out a system of hand signals or use walkie-talkies to direct the feature car to the best position in your frame. And watch out for shadows creeping into the shot from the surrounding landscape or camera car. Tracking is safe on open roads with just one car and you shouldn't be doing anything illegal if you wrap the rear seatbelt around you. If you plan to shoot more than one car, it's best to use a private road or hire a track for an hour or two. In-car action, particularly with a convertible, is a good one to add to your shooting list. It works well in low light with a pop of flash from the camera filling in the foreground and a shutter speed from a 15th to a 125th of a second. The best position is sitting high overlooking the cockpit to the road ahead. Don't forget to hold on and tell your driver to take it easy. Another useful shot to have in your repertoire is the rig shot. There are many rigs on the market costing a lot of money, but you can build your own small rig using a lightweight tripod, a couple of suction cups bought from the internet and some photographer's super clamps. The shot with the rig is to give the idea of speed using a long exposure. Best time of day to do this is in the evening when the light level has dropped. However, you can use a neutral density filter or shoot in a dark location like a wood. Ideally, pick a smooth, quiet road on a slight hill as the car will be rolling with the engine off during the shot to reduce any vibration. Try varying shutter speeds from a 30th right down to one second, letting the car roll very slowly during the shot as you walk along next to it. Make sure your driver keeps as still as possible and is ready on the brakes. There are lots of other bolt-on goodies for car photography, but one I really like is this little clamp by Manfrotto that fits onto the partially wound up window and uses the same long exposures as the small rig. If you don't want to touch the shutter button, to avoid camera shake, use a self-timer or remote if you have one. Be careful and considerate on the roads. Go out there and have fun getting some great shots.